Shane, you've made a point that um, the church has had a hard time with grace, with the sense of a need for perfectionism and this projection of how it is, and yet working with youth it can be more powerful if they understand that it's wounded healers, it's broken folks like us who are recipients of grace who can walk with them and be honest about our own our own difficulties. But I know youth workers are going to hear are going to want to hear more from you on how and when should I be honest in sharing my brokenness and what are the boundaries where I really shouldn't be imposing my story on the young people. And I I, I would just like to ask you to walk into that question of the power of ministry that is transparent mm -hmm. and honest and where the limits of that might be. So I, I think transparency is beautiful and healing and confession is a sacrament. Like mm -hmm. saying that we're sorry, admitting that we've done wrong. And for too long, I think the church has kind of uh, tried to act like we're, we're, we're perfect, you know, in order to get in. And I, I'm kind of rem reminded of this uh, uh, church I visited. So I went to this Sunday morning worship service and uh, it was a congregation that was reaching a lot of unchurched people, a lot of young people. And uh, as I go in, I noticed that the greeters at the door, instead of having suits and ties on, they had t-shirts on that said, no perfect people allowed. <laughs> and I thought, man, I think that's what greeters should look like in every church. You know, everybody is welcome here as long as you know you don't have everything together. And I think that's what people are really longing for, is not uh, uh, for, for a place where everybody pretends that they're perfect, but a place where they can be vulnerable and honest. And that has to be modeled and led. And, and uh, I, I even think of, of the leaders in, the, in Scripture, pe people who are heroes and sheroes of our faith. I mean, they weren't people who were perfect. Moses killed someone. David was a womanizer, he committed adultery with Bathsheba, I think more accurately rape, and he killed her husband. Uh, like Saul of Tarsus terrorized the early church. And I like how Bono said, the fact that the Bible is brimful of messed up people used to disturb me. But now, Bono says, I find it a great source of comfort. Uh, that we see, as St. John of the Cross said, that it's the cracks that let the light come in. And that, that this story is not about how good we are. It's about how good God is. And God works through broken vessels. Some of the greatest healers that I know in the world are wounded healers. They've survived a lot. They've made mistakes. They've had stuff done to them. And those bumps and bruises that we're often kind of conditioned to be ashamed of, uh, we, we think of our bumps and bruises sometimes as our liabilities, but they're actually our credentials. Those are the ways that God kind of shines through those uh, uh, things. And, and so, um, you know, even Peter, I think it's, it's a beautiful thing that, that Peter is the rock of the church because he, he was constantly making mistakes. He was saying things and, you know, he denies Jesus. He ends up, you know, on a really bad day, he takes a weapon after he's heard the Sermon on the Mount from <laughs> Jesus himself, cuts a guy's ear off, Jesus scolds him, you know. And I think that that uh, uh, one of my friends said, maybe we got the translation wrong. It's not Jesus, you're the rock I build my church on, but Jesus, you're, or Peter, you're as dumb as a rock, but I'm still building my church on you, you know. And the story is that, that God uses wounded healers. God uses... Uh, uh, folks that are willing to show up and be transparent with who they are. And I think, I think that's what we need right now, that we need to be honest. And, and Jesus didn't just come to make bad people good. Jesus came to bring dead people to life. And you can be moral and not alive. And we want to be a place where the church is filled. And the church is filled with folks who are admitting we don't have it all together. And that's what grace is all about.